Hey everybody, this is Rick. Uh, it's been a while since I've put together one of my YouTube videos uh, describing a little bit about what's been going on and what's been going on with my trailer and what's been going on in the vehicle, what's been going on in my life uh, since I have retired three weeks ago and Shelly and I have been on the road for 25 days now. Um, but the gist of this video is kind of a tutorial about the trailer and what it's been up to and the upgrades I've made. I haven't put anything together in at least a year. So stick around, watch the whole thing, and I, I think you know, you'll, you'll get something out of it. There's been some major improvements, some major changes in the electrical systems, um, the way things have been laid out. So here we go. Uh, the, I'm gonna jump the phone back and forth with me and the wife uh, explaining some of this and some of that. So here we are at Dispersed Camping just outside of Silverton, Colorado. We've been in URA for the last week. Uh, Glenwood prior to that, Denver prior to that. Um, the trailer pretty much looks the same as if you've seen any of my other previous videos. So as you can see, uh, originally there was only 200 watts of flexible panels up there. Uh, last January, February, when I was in Silverthorn, um, I did this upgrade, there's a whole video on that. And so that's one upgrade. Trusty GX, pulling this thing so well. So if anybody can notice, one major change here is that I don't have that fancy aluminum wheel anymore. What I did was I had 3,500 pound axle and wheels and brakes and springs on this thing. And the last I had weighed it, it weighed in it 3,400 pounds. So just as we got here in uh, June, we had a trailer shop upgrade the axle. Everything 6,000 pounds. The tire, the wheel, the brakes, the springs, all of it. And man, does it make a difference. It rides so good. And honestly, it's all about the confidence factor that I know that I'm not gonna bend an axle have improper wear. Got. So now we're gonna get into a little of the backs. What's going on back here? Okay, with my wonderful, lovely assistant wife on the camera, I'm gonna show you a little of what's going on back here. So of course, some of you know, I, I reversed this door. Anyway, reverse the door, put the hydraulic pistons on, it works really good. We have a screen room that goes on here. Um, we may have to use it a little bit of what I understand. This spot here is a little buggy. But what we got going on here is tons of storage underneath the bed, my pull-out kitchen, more storage, my 21 gallons of water, my two 136-hour lithium-ion batteries, which if you know the backstory, I only had one. Well, I upgraded to two with, from my good friend down in Glenwood. He hooked me up and then we also added a heater with a thermostat to keep the batteries warm so that when I'm skiing and boondocking in the winter, the batteries can be warmed because they're lithium ion. They have to be kept at a certain temperature to either charge or discharge. And I have a separate little video I'm gonna put in right now a right, brief description of what's going on down in here. This is under the bed. This is my 21 gallon water tank with a pump, um, a little uh, uh, chamber, whatever the hell that thing's called, and two 136 hour lithium ion batteries with um, a little heat pad mounted against the back wall there and wired into my thermostat which is set for 40 degrees for it to come on. So when it's super cold in the winter, the batteries can charge because they won't charge if it's cold. So now that you've seen the, the, the battery upgrade from inside here, um, that was up in there about six feet is where all that is. So here I've got my propane hot water heater. It's on demand, works flawlessly for our shower. Very pleased with that. Um, and 21 gallons of water. Now we've got my pull-out kitchen. So 
here we have our kitchen. Refrigerator, cooking goods, 150,000 BTU, wok burner, wok, all cooking utensils, and of course the trusty 12 volt and 110 refrigerator. It works really, really well. I'm really pleased with how everything's working out. Now that we have, I'm going to say close to 80 or 90 days in this thing over the last year, I think we're, we're getting all the bugs worked out. And it's kind of neat for me to explain things from a, a used perspective, because before when I first put out some videos, I hadn't actually used it. I built it, I was super proud of it, but I didn't know what the bugs were. So. Here we've got now the ultra solar charge controller working the 400 watts, charging the batteries, all my fuses, solar shut off, everything shut off, my diesel heater, which is a whole kind of another story because it didn't work that great over the winter, but I think it was because I didn't have a good fuel filter in it and it would leak a little diesel fuel out of this tank, which doesn't work the greatest. Um, but we're going to work on that this winter. Up here we've got a 55 watt charger so that if I'm plugged into shore power and my batteries are dead and it's cloudy out, I could boost those batteries up in a very short period of time. Or I could pull out my propane powered 2500 watt uh, generator, which is stored up in there. Um, some improvements we've done over time. Are all right, so now I'm back on camera and I'm gonna be explaining a little bit about what goes on inside here. We got our little screen net and inside we've got our living space that has been so unbelievably comfortable. This is a queen size that has two different foam mattresses that make it so super duper comfortable. This box goes is about four by four and that's just inside storage. Over on the electronic side, you can see we've got an array of different things. That's showing my batteries are at 100%. The sun is blazing down on them. I've got fans for my shower and for my toilet. This is for my recirculating shower. This is my main water pump. And this is the shower pump. That's actually the shower pump. This is, <laughs> you know, all mixed up. And we got my crazy little devices here like I built that neat little fan that works so good for just moving air around I made it out of computer fans over here we've got my thermostat to keep my batteries All warm. Right, so now we're gonna do a little test it's a nice sunny day out I started out at 81% this morning and now I'm fully charged with my solar and I have the air conditioning running and we're gonna see where this ends up in one hour. All right, so here we are, one hour later. It used 15% to run the air conditioning for one hour on a sunny day. So I think we could run it probably all day. Here we've got my shower. And you may ask, well, why are there hooks everywhere? Because you gotta find a place to put things. Why are there two shower heads? Well, one is for a re recirculating shower that uses a sump to catch two gallons of water. I'll let Shelly take a warm shower and then I'll take a cold shower and reuse her shower water. So here we got the two integral parts of the recirculating shower. This is the sump that mounts up underneath here. I'm gonna put it in place and I'll show it to you after it's in place. So here we got this guy just screws in place up underneath the shower which creates a sump quick connector to here goes in there this quick connector connects uh, somewhere down here I haven't done it in a year I forget right here make sure that is on Make sure that's on and that's off. And I'll show you the inside. Okay. So here we got a simple little water filter. 
and it just goes in place there. I haven't had one in there for a little while. So here's our pump. There's a little screen filter right there. Recirculates. Out comes the water out of that head, back into the sump. And I will then reuse the water that Shelly just took a shower with, which has cooled down a little bit. And that's the recirculating shower. If you got any more questions about that, please feel free to ask. ask. You get winded so easy out here, it's freaking ridiculous. Woo. Here, we've got our composting toilet with the really awesome urine diverter. Everything in here is super duper clean because we haven't used it in a week because we've been staying at a campsite. But that is called a urine diverter. Basically, you have a, a tub with some sawdust in it. Number two goes in the back. Number one goes in the little bucket there. When you're done, you put another handful of sawdust on there. You put the lid on it and it works like a charm. Flawless. Up towards the front, we've just got a little sink. I have no tanks. This water just runs right out of, just runs right out the bottom, kind of like the shower does. Up top, I have two sleeping bags for winter when it gets really cold, but only had to use one. We took one down just for a little more free space. And that concludes the latest update in my post-retirement living trailer thing. We've been in this thing for 25 days now. And it seems to be working. This is an example of dispersed camping that is free in Colorado. It is absolutely fantastic. Sometimes a little buggy, sometimes a little dirty, um, but it's fairly safe. Uh, I've already met all our neighbors and they all seem super cool. You don't have any water. This one doesn't have any vault toilets, which is really nice. But uh, that's what we got going on here in Colorado. So thanks for watching and uh, you know the old like and subscribe and maybe I'll put more up. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. Hey, so on a on a parting note, this place is fucking awesome.